All right, so in today's episode, we're going to talk about why your team, why your company is bleeding out and they're going someplace else and what you can do to change it. All right, what's up, my friends? Todd Falcone here. Welcome back to another episode. Yeah, I know, a little harsh, bleeding out, but I mean, let's stop the bleeding, shall we? So let's chat about this subject matter of why you're losing people in the droves, if that's the case. And obviously, if that's not the case for you, beautiful, you must have things go on right, which is a great thing. But uh, what's incredibly frustrating, and I mean, I don't, there's, there's probably a better word to describe it than frustrating. It's probably beyond frustrating is when you put people into your business, when you put like, you know, somebody who uh, comes in and signs up as a representative, a distributor, a rep, a brand partner, affiliate, whatever it's called in your deal, they come in, they spend some time and then they split and then they go someplace else and then they win. They're winning someplace else. You're like, wait, what the heck is wrong here? You know, and, and, and it's like, that would drive me nuts. That would drive me batty uh, to bring, ha have somebody coming into your business, especially somebody that you know, like for example, like let, let's just be, like I like to be real with you guys. I mean, that's just the way I am. I'm pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm talking about like, for example, like even experienced networkers. I mean, here, here's, here's, well, I'm gonna go in a couple different directions, I guess, mentally. So be cool with that. Um, you know, the truth is there's a lot of movement within the network marketing profession, okay? There's people that leave companies and, you know, they go to another company. I mean, I don't know too many people, who, I, I know people, but I don't know too many people who've been with only one company that's the only company that they've ever built. They've never done another deal. And I, I love that. I think that's a great thing. It's kind of like a marriage. Like if you can get, a, get, you know, find your right partner and you guys can stay married until eternity, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. The reality is in network marketing when it comes to business, uh, most people, a great majority, I don't even know what the percentage is, I would guess probably over 95%, if not more, uh, you know, are going to be with more than one company, you know, during the span of their lifetime as, as an independent rep in the field. Uh, again, it would be cool if you find the right deal, you can build it once, make it last forever, and, and that can happen, uh, but, but it's not necessarily the, uh, the norm. So, but I'm talking. But so the reason I brought that up is like when you bring somebody into your business who has prior experience, prior successful experience in network marketing. Marketing, like the last two companies that they built, they were, you know, they crushed it in both companies. Why they left, it doesn't matter. They, they let's say they ended up in your organization. Maybe their company went out of business. I've had that happen, or you know, just other reasons which would cause somebody to to go and go someplace else. Uh, that that can happen. That's just the reality of of you know network marketing. And so now you got this person on your team uh, that comes over, they've got skills, they've got ability, they've got work ethic, and they come and they hang out for a little bit, not hang out, but they hang out and build, and they're not seeing any progress. I mean, a person with experience who can't, uh, that has zero retention, uh, zero duplication, there's a problem, and that problem needs to be addressed, okay? I mean, it could be company issues, uh, it could be field-related issues, but it's, but it's, it's an issue that you, You've got to resolve. Like, and the other part of it is, even if it's a person that comes into the business that has never done network marketing, and you keep putting people in, and nobody's making money, that's a problem that you need to address. There's, you can't just sit there, you know, sitting on your hands and go, oh, "Okay, I guess this is just the way it is." I mean, you can, you can, uh, but that's not going to do you any good. So, what you got to be looking at, for example, is like why. And I, you need to really ask yourself this: if you're if you're struggling with this issue where you're getting people in, nobody's duplicating. Okay. Now, look. Let, let's also let's Let's, let's be totally uh, straightforward, okay? I'm talking about you're putting people in and like you're putting people in on the regular and nobody's duplicating. Nobody's like ranking, nobody's earning money. Uh, not, oh, you know, I'm not winning here. And I'm like, well, how many people have you recruited? And you're like, well, one. Th that's not even close to enough sample size to sit there and say that it's not working. You know, so that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you bring people in who've got ethic, work ethic. They've got desire. They're hungry. They're taking the right kinds of actions. They're taking the appropriate actions that are going to help you succeed, help you win in network marketing. And they're still not winning. Okay. Th if that, again, I, again, I don't know what a, a bigger, better word other than frustrating would be but it's something big okay uh, so 
so we got to solve that problem, right? What, what's, what's the problem? You have to step back and go, why aren't people duplicating? Now, again, imagine the scenario. Somebody came in, they had prior experience in network marketing, they come to you, they're in your organization, they're, they're in, and then they don't win, and then they're gone. And then they're, then they're winning over there. Okay, you got to be looking at that going, wait, what the hell's wrong here? They're winning over there. Uh, they didn't win here. Like, why is that? Like, I think I think I, I did a, I did a live on this, I think, on Instagram like uh, a month or so ago. I think company owners need to look at that and go, what's the problem here? Uh, as well as distributors. Like, so if that's happening company wide and, and you're getting zero organic duplication, uh, then that needs to be addressed. And I think that's something that should be addressed by top leadership in the field, as well as owners of companies to figure out what's the problem. That's like an open discussion that must be had uh, to resolve resolve the problem because it is a it is it, in, in this case that would be a problem. Can you imagine you're bringing people in and they're falling out just as fast as you you put them in? The truth is, there's always attrition in network marketing. There's always migration. There's always people coming and going. That's always going to happen. That's probably never going to change. But if you got people coming into your business and they're not winning, and this is happening repeatedly over and over and over again, something needs to change. So, so what do we need to change? What do we have to look at here? So let's 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 uh, let's address the situation. So okay. Uh, I, got, I got, I'm in this company. I got people that are coming in. Nobody's duplicating. Okay. Well, uh, and again, I'm just, just to be clear, we're talking about people that are coming in, not sitting on their butt and doing nothing, but they're actually making effort uh, to do something. They're making the right kinds of effort. They're just not playing the post and pray game. Prayer is great. Pray, uh, posting is great. But the combination of posting and praying and hoping something good's going to happen is not a, it's not a methodology that's, that's going to help you succeed in network marketing. Uh, both, again, both posting, posting's great on its own. Prayer is great on its own, but posting and then sitting back and praying that something good is going to happen, it's not a good strategy. So, so if, again, so I want to just make sure we're clear on, on the scenario that I'm pointing, you know, pointing out here. So it's people that are doing the work, people that are capable people that are doing the work, yet they're not succeeding. That's a problem. That is a freaking huge, huge problem. So first thing, okay, let's look at one simple thing. How about uh, expectations, okay? Let's, let's combine expectations with, um, you know, with, I guess, time. Uh, when somebody comes into a business, now an experienced person would know this. An experienced person would come in and know they're, ain't, they're, they're probably not going to be making $20,000 a month in their second month. That's typically, that's not the norm. Uh, so, but imagine again, if, so you either, have, you either have people that are coming into your business that have zero experience in network marketing, or you have people that are coming into your business that have experience in network marketing. That's it. There's only two, right? The, uh, brand new to network marketing, experience in network marketing. So either one of those groups coming into your organization and they're not succeeding, uh, we got to look at expectations. You have to understand, I've done this so many times when I'm doing trainings on stages uh, and teaching like onboarding and launching and starting distributors. You have to understand that people have like an internal clock uh, and we don't know when the buzzer goes off. And if you don't know when the buzzer goes off, it's like, what do I mean by the internal clock? I mean, they're coming coming in and they're like, if, the, if I'm not making, and they don't even know what the number is. If they're not seeing progress, if they're not seeing movement forward, movement upward, if they're not seeing money coming in as a result of their efforts, at some point they're going to be like, wait, this isn't really working. They're working. Again, be, let's be clear. They're working, but it isn't working. It's like, wait a minute, I've been in this thing for six months. I made $200 this month. Uh, that's, that's not going to cut it for most people. So we have to go in and understand what we're talking about here so we can resolve the problem. So expectations, right? A newer person may come in and they might have these overly high expectations. They might have this unbelievably high expectation. Uh, like, oh, I'm going to be making, I, I, when I started, I thought I'd be making 10 grand a month in 90 days. I, I wasn't even making $10 a month in 90 days. So my thought in my brain was I'm going to be making this, this, this amount of money in my head, but I didn't. And, and so what happens is when you have overly high or just high expectations or expectations, period, and then you under deliver on what those expectations are that leads to frustration and discouragement, that leads to um, lacking in focus, that leads to eventually quitting, going and finding maybe something else to see if the grass is greener on the other side or whatever. We know that deal, right? So w sitting down with your person and like, let's be real here. Let's talk about what, what our expectations are. Like, what, what do you want to accomplish here? How quickly do you want to accomplish it? Uh, what do you, you know, what do you look, what, what, what kind of time commitment can you put into this thing on a weekly, daily, monthly basis? Like getting on the same page, that's a pretty good thing. Uh, so that's, that, that could be one, probably one small element, but certainly an element is, is overly high expectations over the timeline of what, when they, when they would expect 
to be making X amount of dollars uh, on a on a monthly basis, let's say. And if and if it's just not delivered upon, if they're not if they're not getting there, then they're gone. So the problem is also we don't know when the timer goes off. It could be two weeks. It could be a month. It could be six months. And so uh, I did a live on on this subject. I think about a week ago. And I think what's what's interesting is if you if in your mind, if in your mind you're thinking, okay, I got a week with this person. I got a, I got a single week with this person. If they're not making money in a week, then they're gone. Uh, oh, uh, wait a second. I've only got a week with this person. Then what would you do? If you literally had seven days uh, to get this person into profit, they're not going to be getting rich in seven days. They're not going to be making big bucks in seven days. But man, if it, if within the first seven days, I can I can help that person. I can work with that person to help them get to their first rank, get a check, see, you know, get into profitability where they're in the black, right? They're, 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 they've cost them 500 bucks to get started, let's say, and they've made 700. They got a $200 profit moving in the right direction. Then that that's a good sign. Here's the thing. Most people don't quit network marketing companies when they're making money. Okay. Most, I said most, because look, I've seen people leave $50,000 a month checks, hundred thousand dollar a month checks and go someplace else. Why? It doesn't matter. It does happen. That's probably more of a rarity, but, but what is absolutely incredibly common is people coming into a network marketing company and they're not making money. And if you're not making money, you start to lose focus. You're like, what's again, let's keep in mind. These are people that are doing the work. Okay. That's very different than somebody who's not doing the work. If somebody's not doing the work, then they shouldn't be making any money. But if they're doing the work, they're doing the right work and they're not seeing progress. They're not seeing enrollments. They're not seeing duplication. They're not seeing their new, their new reps coming in and those new reps succeeding, getting customers, getting new reps. Okay. That's so I just, again, I want to be crystal, crystal clear on what we're covering today. Cause again, you know, somebody who comes in and sits on their butt and never does anything, they shouldn't be making any money anyhow. So, so you, you got the scenario, right? If, if in your mind, you've only got a week, what would you do? That's my question to you. Think about that for a second. What would you do if you only had a week to get this person into profit? I mean, you probably set pretty much everything else aside and be working with that person. Like, who can we call? Who can we talk to? Who can we reach out to? Let's do it together. I, and I think that's a great strategy, by the way, not coming in, playing the, you know, the Italian guy in the kitchen. By the way, I was making meatballs in the kitchen the other day, which was awesome. And I made some pasta. I didn't eat the pasta. The kids did. And you know, what do you do to check the pasta to make sure it's done? You pull out a piece of pasta. I don't normally do this, but you throw it up against the wall. And if, if the pasta sticks to the wall, then the pasta is probably ready. Just al dente, right? Just perfect, right? So, but you know, people aren't pasta. Okay. Uh, we've got to bring somebody in, especially and regardless, whether it's a new person, a new person who's never done network marketing before, they're going to need some more handholding. They're going to need some more attention. They're going to need more guidance, more mentoring, uh, more assistance. And for you to just throw them up against the wall, like pasta and hope that they're going to stick around is a very, very poor strategy. I would be making calls with that person. I would be doing reach outs with that person. I would be doing third party validation. I would be doing zooms, three-way calls, whatever it took. And I, I'm going to invest my my time in you and it's a two-way street. I'm not going to go do it for you, but I would do it with you. That's a great strategy, guys. If you really want to see more people succeed, then doing it with them is, is going to naturally create greater successes, more, more consistent, more frequent successes than just throwing somebody out there on the streets and hoping that they're going to survive and they're going to get it instead attacked by the wolves out there. Okay. Now, again, there's we, we, we independent distributors can only control we, what well, independent distributors are doing, you can't control what the company is doing. That's the one and only thing about network marketing that is just, it's out of your control. You don't make the, you don't, you know, they're, they're pulling the puppet strings. They're making the decisions and hopefully they're making good decisions or making wise decisions or doing things that are, that are, you know, uh, creating an environment that's conducive to uh, growth and revenue and sales and all of that. But you don't, con con you don't control it. You got You got to just look at what is, what do I control here that I can, that I can uh, initiate, that I can do that will make a difference in terms of, you know, people coming in and sticking and staying around. The thing, the most important thing that you have to think about is I need to get them into the money. Okay. If they're, again, well, I'm not talking about customers here. We're talking about distributors, reps, brand partners, affiliates, all these different terms that are used for people in network marketing. I need to get them in the money and I need to get them in the money as quickly as possible. They need to see upward movement. They need to see growth. They need to see something, something returning from their, uh, their efforts, okay? And they need to have they need to have an alignment of expectations. If the expectation is, oh, I want to make 10 grand my first month, but I'm willing to put an 
hour in this month and work, those that's so far off track that we need to bring them a little closer together. The effort and the result, the the uh, the wishful result, what they're wishing, they're hoping to get. They, they need to be in line alignment with one another. So if somebody came to me and said, "Hey, man, I want to make ten grand my first month." I'm like, "Cool, that's awesome. I love big thinkers." And I'm like, "How much time do you got to put in?" He goes, "Dude, I'll do this thing seven days a week, all day long, fifteen hours a day if I have to, and I'll sit up, sit up, sit there and just focus on revenue producing activities and blow this thing up." That's fully that's fully possible in that situation. But the scenario where somebody comes in, they want to make ten grand their first month, and they're willing to put an hour in during that entire first month, that's a joke. So that's what I'm talking about, giving you polar opposites in terms of, of alignment of expectations. So again, uh, w what we also would have to look at is, okay, uh, are, are, are people, first of all, if, if you're able to enroll them, in other words, you're able to get them in, okay, then the, the tip, I, my guess would be, all right, well, whatever you're doing to get them in, whatever uh, video you're putting them in front of, whatever process that you're putting them through, whether it's getting them on a live Zoom or pre-recorded Zoom, a live video presentation, a recorded video presentation, you're putting them into an ATM group, uh, you're doing a PBR, an in-home presentation, whatever it might be, uh, if, if you're able to enroll them, then clearly the you're, you know that's, that's not the problem. It's what happens when they come in and are we getting people, and they might even be getting people enrolled. So you might have, you might have that covered. Okay, this is, this is a totally different conversation, which I'm not having with you today about, okay, if, 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 if we're doing the work and we're not able to enroll people, like nobody's signing up, that's, we'll save that for another conversation. But what I'm talking about is you're able to enroll them and they're coming in, they're doing the work and there's no duplication. Okay, there's, you know, nobody, nobody, there's just nothing happening. It's like people are coming in, they're dropping like flies. Okay, so it, it requires you stepping back a little bit and going, okay, let's look at what we're doing. What am I doing with my new people? Do we have uh, an onboarding process? Uh, is the onboarding process, well, let me define onboarding process, just so, again, I don't like making assumptions. An onboarding process is, are the things that happen, the steps that are taken, after someone has enrolled into your company to make sure that they feel comfortable, they feel confident, they know what to do, they know how to do it, and then they can go out and do it, okay? So it's like, it's like an, 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 I'm thinking this word, it's like an instruction manual, uh, but it's really, we're not here to just lay, lay an instruction manual in front of somebody and say, go figure out how to put that piece of furniture together. Oh my gosh, ready to assemble furniture. I mean, with 82 steps, I had to do a desk like that probably 30 something years ago. It drove me nuts, took me 12 hours to do it. Uh, but uh, you know what's interesting since I just brought that up? If, if someone who had assembled that desk before and they, they assembled that desk 15, 20, 30, 100 times, and even though it's in a bazillion pieces on the floor, I mean, this is an exact scenario for me, seriously. I, put, I bought this, this, this L-shaped desk from like Office Max, like literally 35, 36 years ago. And I looked at the desk, I sat at the desk inside of the office. I'm like, this is, this is the desk that I want. And they brought it out on a flat pallet. I'm like, what's that? They go, that's your desk. It's ready to assemble furniture. I was like, oh my gosh. I take that thing home. It literally took me 12 hours. I was cussing, I was pissed, I was sweating, I was angry, I was ready to throw in the towel because I was reading reading this very complicated set of instructions uh, that, you know, probably somebody who's used to reading instructions, I figured it out eventually. You know, I stuck to it. I was committed to the process of putting the desk, desk together. But if I had somebody who'd put that same desk together a hundred times, it would have been a lot easier. We, would have, we probably got that desk put together in like an hour, okay? So that's like kind of an interesting example that I had no clue was going to come out of my head as I'm talking to you today. But, it, it, but we got to give them, uh, you know, and through this onboarding process, through this getting started process, we need to give them simple steps that, that anyone, regardless of their experience, regardless of whether they're really smart or not that smart, uh, regardless of whatever, that they can follow this, these simple ABC one, two, three steps that, that, that are so simple. And that the term I've used for so many years, and, I've, and it's part of my Cracking the Code to Success program, where I have the section called So Simple a Seven-Year-Old Could Do It. It's got to be that simple, but it also has to be uh, content-rich enough where they're not calling you constantly asking like, well, I don't understand this. And I don't, so you can't, it's gotta, you can't be vague. So it's gotta be specific, but simple. Specific and simple, I think are two good words to describe an onboarding process. And then the third thing is you have to be involved in it, man. You have to be the person that gets, you know, in the trenches with this person and works with them rather than playing the post up against the wall game. Uh, that, I mean, yeah, you could win doing that for sure. I mean, I know people who've done that where they just throw people in, they throw them over to some getting started training and say, Hey, go for it, man. 
and it doesn't typically work out very well for that person. So I think, uh, you know, again, if you're, if you're struggling with this problem where you're just, you know, not seeing duplication, like people are coming in capable, willing, able people, they're uh, not winning in your company. Now it's one thing if they not don't they they, they win, they're not winning in your company and then they go someplace else or excuse me they they leave network marketing altogether, okay that I, that I would still be frustrated like I, why can't they win here that's that sucks, but if they if they come here and then they go win someplace else that's that you know that is a problem, that's a problem. Now the other thing is like if 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 nobody in your entire company is winning right. I mean, everybody's having the same situation. Like people are coming in, nobody's duplicating. They hang out for a month, two months, three weeks. They're gone, and it's just this revolving door. Then that's a company problem. Okay, that's not necessarily an organizational problem. Uh, but if you're in a company where, hey, th this team over here, they're crushing it. They're they're they got rank advancements, they got growth, they got checks. People are seeing progress. Like you're seeing all of this stuff happen over there, over there, but it's not happening here. Then it's something that you're doing. I would investigate that. I would be like, okay, what are they doing that I'm not doing, or what are they not doing that I'm doing? Got to figure this stuff out. You can't be sitting around just waiting for change to happen. I mean, change is constantly. You know, things are always evolving. But just thinking and hoping something's going to change without you changing it is a poor, it's not even a strategy. It's just sitting around and like hoping something's gonna be different, um, but you're not taking any actions to make those things different. So again, I know I use this title, you know, why your company, why your group is bleeding out, um, kind of graphic, but I mean, I don't know, I mean, how do we stop the bleeding, right? I think you wanna stop the bleeding. You wanna, you know, put some pressure on that wound and figure out, okay, how do we get this thing sealed up? It's like having, uh, you know, another analogy. I could probably could have used a lighter analogy. I just, I don't know, that popped into my head, whatever. I mean, you got leaks in your boat. You got holes in your boat. Your boat is filling up with water. Your bilge pump, if you don't know what a bilge pump it is, it pumps the water out of, out, out of the inside of your boat. It can't keep up. Your, your boat is taking on water because there's so many holes in the boat, and you're constantly trying to figure out what, where, where do I need to plug the holes. That's the thing you want to look at is, like, what holes need to be plugged here? Is it... Uh, uh, is it the, the, the business opportunity presentation? Again, taking into consideration the people are doing the work, the right work, not the ones that are sitting on the sidelines, sitting on their hands, doing nothing. Is it the presentation that's not converting? But we kind of already talked about that, right? Because in this scenario that I'm giving you today, people are enrolling, but then they're not duplicating. They're not rank advancing. Uh, understanding that we need to align expectations, understanding that you need to have, um, you know, the, get, getting those expectations about the amount of work and the timeline that they're likely to potentially make money enough to keep them interested, knowing they got, again, they got that countdown timer going on, uh, making sure that you are actively, actively involved in working with them to help them get up and running, especially if you're an experienced person. If I had some dude come in and say, man, I've done 500 of these desks, let's go, and he's working with me, we could knock that desk out in 30, 30 minutes, no problem, done. Versus the 12 hours and all of the frustration, that's a perfect analogy. I don't even know where that, why I thought about that, but I just remember that day, I was, I was not in a good mood, you know? But if I had somebody who, beyond just giving me the getting started, the instruction manual, they're like, hey man, let's do this together, we could have knocked that, seriously, could have knocked that desk out probably 30, 40 minutes, less than an hour and versus 12 hours and me cussing like my dad cusses, which is a really bad habit that I got when, you know, hearing all sorts of words all your whole life growing up. And, you know, that's just, my, in fact, my wife's like, you sound like your dad. What this is, she wasn't even my wife yet, but she goes, you sound like your dad. Like I was screaming, I was yelling, I was so mad. And think about that. We bring that right into network marketing. How frustrating is that, that going to be? Somebody's coming in and they're not seeing something happen. And you've got, again, you got a short timeline. Again, because we don't know what the timeline is, we don't know if it's a week, a month, a day, a year. What if you just acted like, okay, I got seven days to get, get this person into profit. We got 30 days to get them through their first couple of ranks. We got six months to get that person to a, a particular, let's, whatever the amount of income is, minimum amount of income. I got six months to get you to five G's a month or your toast. Now, we don't know what the level is. We don't know what the timeline is, but if you could set up in your mind, like a thought process that you can then take action upon th that you've created, like this is, this is not, you know, this is you making the decision to take control of your business and to take control of your ship, the boat. And so you don't sink well, no, nobody likes a sinking boat. Nobody wants to be swimming around in the ocean with a bunch of sharks. 
because your boat sank because you didn't plug the holes. All sorts of kind of interesting analogies I can bring in on this. You want to stop the bleeding, take a step back and look at what you're doing, what you're not doing. If it's working for other people in your company, it's not working for you, then okay, what's well, clearly working for other people in our company, if it's not working for me and my group, then Houston, what's the problem? Got to look at that. Uh, if it's not happening in the entire company, nobody's duplicating. I, you know, chances are just there's whatever's happening from the uppers, the, the people that are running the deal, the company, there's that pro they're, they're going to be the ones that need to address that problem because that's out of your control. Uh, I don't know. I just think this is a really important conversation to have. Uh, it would be great for you to take a look at what you're doing as a network marketing professional and making sure that you are moving upward, that your people are moving upward, and they're doing so as quickly as possible. All right, so that's it for today's episode. Uh, if you're on my YouTube channel, what's up, YouTubers? Appreciate you. If you're on my podcast and hearing me on audio, that's awesome as well. All the details on this episode, all sorts of great resources to help you win in the network marketing profession are right here at toddfalcone.com forward slash episode 285. That's T-O-D-D-F-A-L-C-O-N-E.com forward slash episode 285. We'll see you next time. Have an amazing day. I'm going to go to the next one.